Welcome back guys. Today we are going to get nerdy. We are doing a serious tech dive on AN fittings. Now, if you've never used these to plumb a car, you're probably left wondering, where do I even begin? There's a million and one fittings out there, a dozen different hose types. How do I even get started? Or maybe you have used them and you know that they can be pretty finicky to work with. Or maybe you like me and you love plumbing with AN hardware. And that's why I'm gonna plumb the entire Ferrari with AN fittings. From the oil system to the coolant system to the fuel system, every hose on the 308 is going to be AN. So I figured why not make an information packed episode. We're gonna do a deep dive. I'm gonna tell you everything that I know about these things so you know which fittings to choose, which hose to choose, and which tools might make this whole setup easier for you to make lines of your own. Because trust me, this is one of the best investments you can make in a build. So here we go, let's dive in. For this episode, we're going to start with the absolute basics, and that's discussing what AN lines even are. Because if you look in the engine bay of pretty much any built vehicle, you're going to notice braided lines strewn about everywhere. These fluid lines are typically built using AN fittings at each end. That AN stands for Army Navy. AN hoses were co-developed by branches of the United States military so that there would be a standardized hose system. And thankfully, for our sake, it spilled over into the world of motorsports, and they've run away with it, giving us unlimited options for fluid systems. The guys over at Vibrant Performance were awesome enough to send everything over that we're going to need to plumb the Ferrari. So let me give you guys the rundown. There are a huge number of variables when it comes to choosing fittings and hoses, so we'll start with sizing. As most of you probably know, AN fittings come in sizes ranging from dash 2 to dash 32 in irregular steps. What you may not know, though, is the meaning behind those numbers. They represent the number of sixteenths each hose size is for its outside diameter, meaning that dash 8 is 8 sixteenths of an inch outside diameter, or half of an inch, while dash 16 would be a one inch line. Dash four is just a quarter inch, and of course, none of that makes any sense if you're from anywhere else in the world, but I digress. Here sitting on the table, I've got a dash 16, a dash 12, a dash eight, and a dash four fitting for size comparison, each one being a straight fitting. The usage for each size varies, with dash three being for brake lines, dash six or dash eight often used for fuel, and dash 16 and dash 20 often used for coolant lines, but you can really use any however you want. AN fittings also come in a slew of different angles, from straight to 30, 45, 60, 90, 120, 150, and 180 being the most common angle variants to get the hoses pointed wherever you want them to go. There are a number of different connection types for AN fittings, but there are three that I would say are the most common, and I'm going to give a quick example of how each one works and interfaces with the others. Up first is the female hose end, the most common hose end, and it's designed to go on a male bung, like the one on this oil scavenge filter, for example. They thread together an interface, and the aluminum 37 degree angle inside of them creates a seal without any sealant or sealing tape. That is, of course, one of the main advantages of AN lines, that and the reusable fittings. On the other hand, we have O-ring bung ports, or ORB fittings. Lots of peripheral accessories, like this water pump, have ports for ORB fittings that use an O-ring to seal. You can use an adapter like this, which gives you a male end that a female hose end can go onto, just like this, or you can use an AN fitting with an ORB attachment on it, eliminating one adapter and one extra point that could leak should you not get everything tightened down or have a line problem. The adapter is more than acceptable though, and it's the way I'll be using most of the AN fittings on the 308. Last but not least is a very uncommon type of fitting, and it's a hose end with a male end on it. You won't see these very often, but it is useful for joining hoses if you need to splice something in, or need to change from one hose type to another, like I have here. Now you may find that you want to adapt AN fittings to all sorts of other devices or peripherals. And for example, this is an NPT thread, which looks like an O-ring bung, but notice that the threads are tapered. This would definitely need sealing tape on it, but allows you to connect to other accessories. This only scratches the surface for fitting types though. There are also banjo fittings, hardline adapters, crimp lines, push locks, and countless others, as well as adapters like you see here to put pretty much any of them together. 
This of course brings us to the two main different types of hoses, rubber and PTFE, or polyterra, polyfluorotet, polytetrafluoroethylene. Now, as you might guess, there are advantages and disadvantages to each, but the ones we're going to focus on right now are capabilities and diameters. You'll notice that the PTFE line, the one on the left, is considerably larger inside than the rubber line on the right, even though both are dash 10 lines. They're both wrapped in braided stainless steel, although the PTFE line also has a black nylon casing on the outside of it. The rubber line is admittedly a bit easier to work with, a bit easier to bend, and is less likely to kink as you try to maneuver it through a vehicle. But on the other hand, the PTFE line is lighter and will flow considerably more through it for a given size. PTFE is also much more resilient for corrosive fuels, such as methanol or E85, although Vibrant Performance's rubber lines are E85 compatible. Rubber will work for most jobs, but if you've got concerns about cost, your flow rate, the corrosivity of whatever fluid you're running in it, or weight, you might look into PTFE. It's important to note that they do use different fittings. This one is for rubber hose, and it's just two pieces, a hose end and its receiver, and they thread together pretty easily. On the other hand, PTFE hose has proprietary fittings, and it's a three-piece system that includes a ferrule or an olive. This olive sits between the PTFE liner and the braided stainless, and it can make assembling these lines a bit more challenging, but it's up to you to decide if that payoff is worthwhile. I'm going to show you how to assemble both of these fitting systems, so let's get to it. There's a lot of different way to cut AN line with a hacksaw or with an angle grinder like this, but I want to show you why I don't use this method, even though it does produce clean, consistent cuts. You'll notice that using any type of abrasive method to cut this hose will leave a fine rubber sediment inside of it. You can see it collected here on my fingertip. And I've really found it hard to get rid of this inside of the line, even with compressed air or rinsing. There's just nothing you can really do about it, and I don't want that in my engine systems. So I prefer to use shears, and Vibrant does sell a set specifically for cutting AN line. You could probably use any type of shear as long as it's capable of cutting through the stainless steel braiding though. The reason that I like shears is because not only is it simple and mess free, but it won't leave any particulate inside of the line. The trade-off is though is that it does compress the line, but I find it pretty easy to straighten it back out and haven't run into issues yet. It does help to tape your lines where you're going to cut them, and I like using this AN line specific tape because it doesn't have any adhesive and won't pull the braiding up as you try to remove it. We're working with the rubber line first, and with it cut, we need to install the hose end. And it's as simple as simply pushing it into place. At least, it is simple with Vibrant fittings. Vibrant is a sponsor of the build, but I can definitely say, having used pretty much every AN fitting on the market, if you're not using Vibrant fittings, you'll probably want to invest in a set of cool tools, which will aid in getting the hose into the hose end. Without them, it's pretty easy to tear up the tips of your fingers and you're going to bleed everywhere if you're not careful. But the shape of Vibrance hose ends really does make it easy to assemble these lines and I have not had to use the cool tools ever since making the switch to Vibrance hose ends. With all that said, you'll want to push the line in as far as you can and seat it against the base of the hose end. From here, the next tool we're going to need is some AN fitting soft jaws. These will allow you to clamp an AN fitting in your vise without absolutely destroying the finish on it. You can see that mine have some miles on them, but even still it prevents damage like this from happening to your fittings, leaving them all scuffed up. We're going to clamp our line and our newly installed hose end socket in our soft jaws. And we're going to snug it down enough so that nothing moves as we put some torque on it. I like to leave a mark right at the base of the stainless so I can tell if the line pushes out, but you can do this with a piece of tape too, but it's an important step you don't want to forget. Next, I'm going to use some spray silicone as a lubricant for installation, but if you don't have any, just use a drop or two of motor oil. We're going to hold the base of the line so it doesn't get pushed out while we go on and thread in the actual hose end itself. From here, we need to talk wrenches. There's a ton of different options out there so that you can install these fittings. And the most common way to do it is with aluminum wrenches that won't damage your fittings. The problem at hand though, is that there's technically a size difference between the socket and the nut, the two parts that make up an aluminum AN fitting. 
That brings us to this, which is an adjustable AN wrench that can take out any of the guesswork and keeps you from going back to the toolbox over and over again to grab the right size wrench. This is, without question, one of my favorite tools when it comes to AN hose assembly. And once again, you can find this from Vibrant Performance as well. From here, all that's left is to actually thread the two halves of the fitting together. And as we do this, we want to keep an eye on that mark we made on the braided stainless or the tape that you placed around it to make sure that the hose isn't getting pushed out by the installation of the fitting. It can happen and it will create a leak, so keep a close eye on it. With everything threaded together, take a look at what you've got. You want to make sure that you do leave a small gap between the two pieces of the hose end. You don't want to sink it all the way down. That's a crucial step. You want about a sixteenth of an inch like you see here. But here we have a finished and complete hose assembly. You'll have to ignore the marks on it as this is an old fitting that I had lying around the shop. Now for PTFE line, we're gonna start by putting the socket over the end of the hose, just like rubber, but this time it'll sink down past the end. PTFE line is a bit of a different animal to assemble and is definitely a longer process. For the next step, I've made myself a custom tool, which is simply a ground down cornerless flat blade screwdriver. And I'm gonna use this to pry the braided steel lining away from the Teflon inner hose. And you wanna be really careful as you do this not to pry against the Teflon liner. You don't wanna pierce it and ruin the hose itself. So take your time and be careful and don't slip and stick your fingers on the sharp braided stainless. Find a method that works for you and take your time because this is definitely the hardest part of this process. And because I wanna show you what not to do, I'll damage this hose in the process. You don't wanna pry against the liner like this. This can ruin the hose. Next, we're gonna put that olive around the PTFE or Teflon liner inside the hose, but it's not gonna go by hand, trust me. My preferred method is a bit archaic, but it's simply pressing the hell out of it on the workbench. You want to be careful to make sure you try to press straight down so that you don't get the olive crooked against the end of the hose, and you want to make sure you fully seat it. That PTFE liner needs to be all the way at the base of the olive, but you don't want to push it through. Once again, I'm going to use some silicone spray lubricant to help with assembly, and we need to press the hose end through the olive and into the PTFE liner. We need to seat it all the way down like you see here. Last, we need to take that hose end socket and press it over the frayed, splayed, braided hose. We'll thread it on and we'll do so carefully. We wanna make sure there's no braided steel in the threads or it will kill the fitting. All that's left is just like before. We're gonna seat the hose end into the socket, making sure we tighten it completely, but leaving a small gap at the end. And with that, we've got two completed hose ends, one in rubber, and one in PTFE. With practice, assembling these hose ends gets pretty quick and you can knock them out in rapid succession. Hopefully now you're better prepared to tackle your next AN line project. There you guys have it. That's everything that I know on AN fittings, or at least most of it. It's pretty hard to cram everything into one episode, but hopefully you weren't left with too many questions. But if you are, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them or include them in a future episode because there's no doubt that I've forgotten at least a couple of things. I hope you guys enjoyed this tech episode. I love trying to teach and trying to share my knowledge and what I've learned through my experiences. And I hope that's what you guys are here for too. Leave me some feedback in the comments. And as always, I will catch you guys next week for the next episode. Thanks as always for the support.